Hi everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So today we will be discussing the problems from the code process round 641. That is the ORAC and the models. So what is the problem states? The problem states you'll be given an array of n integers and you got to find the longest increasing subsequence under the conditions that whatever subsequence you are taking, the adjacent index should be divisible. Along with that, it should be increasing. So if we are taking this subsequence, so we can see the index is one, index is three, the index is six. So the adjacent index are divisible. That is three is divisible by one, six is divisible by three. And the elements are one, two, and four. So they are increasing also. So you have to find this longest increasing subsequence such that the adjacent index are divisible. So the longest length is three over here. So if you take one more example, in this we can take this one and this one. So the index is two and the index is four. So the adjacent index are divisible because four modulus two is zero. And then they are increasing three and six. So the length over here is two. So two is our answer. So this is a classical uh, longest increasing subsequence problem where the condition has been changed. So what we can do is uh, let's figure out the dynamic programming approach to this and then we can write the code. So assume you are the first index. So where can you move from the first index? So if one wants to move to two, he needs to check is the value at two greater than one? Yes, it is four is greater. So he can move to two. If one wants to move to three, he has to check is the value at three greater than one because we are maintaining the longest increasing subsequence. So yes, it is. We can move. Can he move to four? If yes, because three is greater than one. Can we move to five? Yes, we can because six is greater than one. Can we move to six? Yes, we can because the value at six is four, which is again greater than one. Can we move to seven? Yes, we can because nine is greater than one. So all the possible movements to the multiples are possible from two. Where can we move? We can move to four because four is the multiple. We can also move to six. So there are two possible movements from two. So let's check. Can it move to four? No, it cannot move. Why? Because from two, the movement to four will have three. So we cannot decrease the value. We need the longest increasing subsequence. We see over here it is three, over here it is four. So that will decrease the subsequence. We cannot move to four. Can we move to six? No, we cannot because we want strictly longest increasing. And over here it is four. So the movement is not possible. So we do not move any further. Let's check out from three. From three, where can we move? So the multiple of three are six, nine, and so on. So can we move to six? Yes, we can because six has four and we have two. So four is greater than two. So we can move to six. That's a possibility. From four, can we move further? The next multiple of four says that the adjacent index are divisible will be eight. So that's not possible. The next index of five says that the adjacent is divisible is 10, not possible. For six, it's 12, not possible. For seven, it is 14, not possible. So we can see that the maximum number of elements taken were one over here, two over here, three over here. So the answer is nothing but three. So how do you code this dynamically? So this was the approach. Now we need to figure out how can we convert this into recursive code. And once you have done this and you know, how do you convert recursive code to memorization? If you do not know, get into the description, watch the link of the video, come back and start again. So if you're standing at any given index, you know, you're moving to two into index, three into index, four into index, and so on till it is less than equal to n. That is what you are doing, right? For three, you move to six. You would have moved to nine if there was an index. And when you're moving, you just need to check if that movement is possible. And from here again, you move to its multiple. So this is how you can write the recursive code. So till when will you move? Till it does not exceed n, because that is the maximum index you can move. So since you're trying all the possible combination of subsequences, what is the complexity? The complexity will be exponential. That is two to the power n. And if you check out the value of n, that is at a maximum of 10 to the power 5. So 2 to the power 10 to the power 5 will bust your machine out. So that's not practical. So you got to do better. So let's first write the recursive code. Then we can think about it. So initially I've taken the n and a globally so that it's accessible to every other function part. For the moment, do not concentrate on the DP array. I run the uh, loop for the test cases. I take the array as the input. I know the minimum answer of the subsequence is 1 itself. Because if even if I do not form a proper subsequence, the minimum answer can be one, the element itself. So the maximum is one. And after that, I run a loop from one to n. So what I do is I take the number itself. That means I'm taking him one. 
and I call the function i. So we come across to the function. It is taking the index. And what it is doing is it gets into its next multiple that is two into index and loops till n because that is the boundary condition. And in doing so, he jumps for index times and he checks if that a of i is greater than a of index, then only it can be a part of subsequence because we have already checked if it is a multiple or not. Provide this check to be able to check if it is a multiple or not. If it is, what we can do is we can add one to the answer and call the function again because the depth of recursion increases. So whatever it returns, I compare it with all the multiples and whichever is the maximum, that is my answer. So why does this work? Assume this over here, we had multiple recursion calls. So whoever gave the maximum, that answer I have to take. This is how recursion works because I'm trying to find the maximum subsequence length. So I'll return that count. So we have got the count and we can write the base condition. Anytime it exceeds the boundary condition, we can return zero. So this was about the recursive code, which runs in the exponential complexity. Now let's see how does memorization work. So we saw that we had an answer for six over here. So the answer for six over here would have been one. What we can, instead of checking out all the multiples of six, what we can do is we can simply return the value stored over here because dynamic programming is this. If you have visited any state previously, you do not revisit it. Instead, return it. So let's see how do you convert this recursive code into a dynamic programming code. So what you do is you take the DP array and you initially initialize with minus one. So what does minus one means? The state has not been previously visited. If you're coming to six over here for the first time, DP would have minus one. That means the state has not been previously visited. After this DP has the value, DP six has the value one. So when you come across here, DP will no more have minus one. So that means that state has been previously visited and you do not need to recompute. You come back over here and whenever you're returning, just add this before returning, memoize it. That means you're hashing it or storing it. And over here, check out if the DP of index has been previously visited. If yes, what you do is you return that DP of index. That's it. And your exponential code. So we, we can see that the complexity from two to the power, 10 to the power five, suddenly boils down to n log n. Why n log n? Because n is for the recursive calls for all the indexes and log n is for all the multiples. You know, one plus one by two plus one by three plus dot 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 is nothing but log of n. That is why the complexity is log of n. So this is the standard way to approach dynamic programming problems. You try out all the possible combinations and when you are doing so, what you do is you simply store the maximum. So what we did was whenever you started, we took one, over here added one more. So one plus one got added as two. Started as one, added one, got two, got three. So you're keeping on adding every time you're getting to the depth of the recursion. So this is the standard way to solve dynamic programming problems. That is you try out all the possible combinations, write the recursive code, and then you can memorize it. As you grow with experience, since this is a big problem and I'm expecting that beginner people are watching it or intermediate. So as you grow with confidence, you can write the iterated DP. But at start, at the beginning, my suggestion will be to write recursive DPs because that is much easier to write than iterative DP. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you understood the concept. Just in case you have, press the like button. And if you're new to my channel, there's a red button. Smash it as hard as you can. And do not forget to press the bell icon because then only you get notified about my video updates.